Well, dear friends, in the past few months, I have been plenty of people in news media and also in social media uh, misusing and misrepresenting charts like the one that you have there on the on the left, showing the um, the increase of child and adolescent referrals for gender dysphoria to uh, United Kingdom uh, clinics. Lately, we have seen charts like these in the United States showing the increasing number of uh, people, particularly young people who identify as gender non-conforming or as transgender or the number of people who are referred for gender dysphoria treatment in clinics and so on and so forth. Now, um, everything that I'm about to say about this chart and about how this chart or charts like these, not only this chart, but charts like these that you see constantly in news media are being misused and weaponized against uh, minorities is related to what I wrote in How Chats Lie. Um, I, sometimes it's a, it's a little bit, um, uh, let's say, discouraging that things that I, that I wrote about uh, years ago and problems that I warned against years ago are, are still appearing on a regular basis. Part of the problem, I think, is that uh, is the fact that we journalists in general are not trained and are really are really bad at reasoning about statistics, reasoning about numbers, reasoning about evidence, and we simply take what uh, experts or alleged experts tell us. Anyway, so let's talk about this chart. And, and as an extension of these, um, all these charts that show you those increases, again, of people with gender dysphoria, of gender non-conforming people, and so on and so forth. I will begin by saying this, right? Because all these charts and all this coverage is being used to fuel a moral panic, right? There's an increase of transgender people, particularly young transgender children, children identified as transgender, right? Is that really a problem? Why is that a problem? Ask yourself, do you think that there is something wrong or abnormal about being LGBTQ? I don't. I don't think that there is anything wrong or abnormal. It might be atypical, which is different, right? The LGBTQ people are, are, are a minority, right? Particularly transgender people are a minority within a minority. And that is part of the reason why they are being targeted constantly, because it's a minority that is very easy to target, because it's hard for minorities to defend themselves, particularly when the, the, these minorities have so little power uh, in news media and other places to defend yourself. So, Ask yourself, just look inwards and ask yourself, am I uncomfortable when seeing these charts because I think that there's something abnormal? Because if you don't think that there is anything abnormal about transgender people, these types of charts should not alarm you. In fact, it may be even good news right, in some cases. And here is what I'm entering in hypotheticals because this chart is showing number of children and number of adolescents who have been referred by the doctors to be observed and to be treated for gender dysphoria. So this increase may be good news, right? Maybe good news because this is the type of care that, you know, adolescents may use and it may be beneficial for them. So it, it's good news that more people are receiving the care that they that they need. Again, this is a counterfactual type of reasoning, right? That sh you should apply when you see charts like this and you snap react to it, right? Again, looking words. Do you think that there's something wrong about being LGBTQ? And if the answer is no, should I be alarmed by this type of chart? The second thing about these types of charts is that it's a lesson that I try to hammer over and over and over and over again in how charts lie. And sorry for the plug, but these are all topics that I cover in the book. The mantra, a chart shows only what it shows and nothing else. Everything else that you see in the chart is not in the chart. It's something that you are projecting. So if you are naturally an anti-LGBTQ person, you're going to see this as evidence of an increase of people who are being referred for treatment in gender dysphoria who don't need that treatment, right? There are these people are being pushed into treatments for gender dysphoria. Is that true? Well, I don't know, but I don't think so. I don't think that that is the case. It might be, but again, the chart is not showing that, right? Again, the chart only shows what it shows, that there is an increase of referrals for gender dysphoria, period, right? Period. Everything else that you're seeing there, the causes for this increase and so on and so forth, uh, those are things that is that are happening in your brain. And in fact, this increase, right? Part of the reasons why this increase may be happening, this is sort of like a cliche already because it's an argument that has been used over and over again, but it's still a compelling argument. We could compare the chart on the left to the chart on the right that displays the increase, quotation marks in there, of left-handed people 
right in 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 the United States because see that there's an increase in the in the in the early 1900s up to well beginning in the, on the 1920s up to the 1940s well there's an increase of left-handed people not because there are more people becoming left-handed it's simply because people stop being pushed to be right-handed and therefore they went back to their natural inclinations again I'm not arguing be careful with what I'm saying. I'm not arguing that these two cases are equivalent. All that I'm saying is that you should think twice about the causal things, the causal relationships that you're seeing on the chart, because the chart is not showing you any causal uh, connection between anything and anything. And when you see uh, charts like that, you should think in terms of counterfactuals and in terms of plausible explanation what plausible explanations um should i could i think about right again hypothetically i'm not saying that anything is of this is true well that increase so in in number of children who are being referred for gender dysphoria treatment it may be just an effect of the fact that doctors and experts and researchers are becoming more familiar with um gender treatments and therefore they are referring their patients more for these types of treatments it may be a result of just education it may be because society is becoming a, a little bit more aware fortunately not more accepting but more aware of the existence of a huge spectrum of sexual orientations gender orientations gender expressions orientations and this may be just a reflection of the fact that more people are experiencing these and they are uh, identifying themselves as these and therefore that leads them to conversations with their caregivers and therefore that leads to refers for gender dysphoria. I think that that is much a much more plausible explanation than to say, oh, there is a social contagion, which is sort of like part of the moral panic that we are seeing that we're seeing these days. And that is connected, by the way, to the first point that I made before, the one related to uh, do you think that there is something wrong about being LGBTQ? Uh, an LGBTQ person or having this type of orientation. I don't think that there is anything anything wrong. There is some background noise in the in the background. I apologize for that. Then the other thing that drives me absolutely crazy is uh, uh, when when I see charts like these or others that we have seen in the United States, in that, for example, that the number of people being treated for gender dysphoria has you know increased by three hundred percent or four hundred percent. Well. Um, honestly, I mean, three hundred percent. But what is the base rate, right? It's like one of another thing that I that I explained in the in the in the book is that small samples and small populations tend to have a much higher variation throughout the years than bigger populations. Just think about it this way: if you have a population of ten people who have been referred for these types of treatments one year, and then five years later you have twelve, you have a twenty percent increase. Right, which sounds like a lot, but it's just two more people, right? But in this case, it's an increase between two. I mean, I, I'm not reading the chart right now, but it's like an increase between 3,000 and 5,000. Is that a lot? Well, actually, it's from the past. If you see from the past, it, it increases progressively. But that again, that may be because the clinic is accepting more patients. Doctors are more aware of that. But when you when we get closer to the present, it's an increase, a sharp increase, increase in there uh, between 2020 and 2022. Is that increase alarming? Well, I don't think that it is. The numbers are so small in this particular case. And in other cases, particularly referring to the United States, I have seen organizations such as Reuters and uh, the New York Times and many others saying, you know, well, last year, you know, in Florida, for example, there was an organization here in Florida. I don't remember the exact number that said, you know, in the past we had 200 children. Uh, I'm making up the number, but the numbers were close to these. Uh, 300, 200, 300 children being treated. And then five years later, we had 700 or 500 or 700 uh, children being treated. And that's an increase of 100 or 200 percent. It has doubled, it has tripled. Those numbers are tiny, super, super small. Just think about the fact that the United States has more than, you know, has tens of millions of people. So again, this high variation that we are seeing, I'm not saying again that this is anything, uh, any, any of these is true or accurate, but all that I'm saying is that think twice, always think twice. That's the problem when we see charts and we jump to conclusions too quickly, right? We need to think more carefully about the charts that we see every day, because charts are not, as, as again, as I say in the book, this is another topic from the book, a chart is not just an illustration. A chart is a visual argument. And in order to understand that argument, you need to ponder that argument 
carefully. And the other thing is that you should also think about what is actually increasing, right? In this particular case, it's not the number of transgender people or, or, no, or gender non-conforming people, is the number of people being referred for gender dysphoria specifically. So you cannot infer that this is an increase uh, in, in the number of a, a transgender people in the overall transgender, uh, in this case, youth, in the overall in the overall population. This connects to my last point. A chart shows all, uh, shows as much as it hides. This is another point that I make in the book. How many people are being treated? Again, thinking in terms of counterfactuals, how many people are being treated versus the number of people that should have been treated, but they are not being treated? We don't know that because the chart doesn't show that. So again, when seeing charts like these, charts that increase the number of transgender people among the population, et cetera, et cetera, always think twice before jumping to conclusions. That's the bottom line. And ask yourself all these questions that I'm putting there on the left, particularly the first one. Ask yourself, do you feel uncomfortable by the fact that there are more gender non-conforming people? And if the answer is true, Maybe you should look at yourself in the mirror and ask, why do I think that it is wrong that there are more non-gender conforming people? Is this because I think that they are abnormal or there is something wrong with them? If the answer to that is yes, then maybe you should look, you know, into again, into the mirror and read a little bit more and actually meet some people. That also helps a lot when discussing these types of matters.